In this video, we'll show you how to adjust the valves on a modern day KTM 4-stroke. Today we'll be working on a 2012 KTM 500 XCW. We're going to need a few different tools to complete this job, including a set of feeler gauges to measure the clearances and calipers to measure the thickness of each shim. But most importantly, we'll need our service manual, which contains the very important, very specific specifications we'll need to complete this job. We're also going to need some valve shims. Rocky Mountain ATV MC carries these in shim kits, which include a bunch of different size shims, or we offer them individually for people that already know which sizes they're going to need. So first things first, we're going to want to start with a clean bike. Having your bike and motor clean is going to make it easier to work on and ensure nothing accidentally falls down into your motor after it's been opened up. Next, we'll just remove the seat and the fuel tank when those are out of the way, now's a great time to blow off the bike. Make sure no dust or anything else is going to get down into the motor. Now go ahead and remove the four bolts holding the valve cover on. For two of these, we used a 10 mm T-handle. On the other side, we had to use a 10 mm open end wrench. So once you've got all four of those bolts removed, we can just go ahead and remove the valve cover. You'll find there's a valve cover breather hose connected to it, so you have to slide that clamp down the hose in order to detach it from the valve cover. Next step is to get the piston at top dead center. On this bike, we're going to shift the tranny up into the highest gear and use the rear tire to spin the motor. You'll know it's at top dead center when you line up the mark on the camshaft sprocket with the mark on the camshaft cap. At this point, you'll want to stuff a rag down around the camshaft to prevent any parts from accidentally falling down into the motor. Now that we've got the motor at top dead center, we can begin measuring our valve clearances. We need to refer to our service manual for the valve clearance specs. As you can see, the intake limit is 0 0.10 to 0.15 millimeters, and our exhaust limit is 0.12 to 0.17 millimeters. We're going to start out measuring our intake valve clearances, and since 0.1 millimeter is the bottom of our service limit, we're going to start with the 0.1 millimeter feeler gauge. So we're going to measure the clearance between the bottom of the rocker arm and the top of the valve shim. You want the gauge to be able to slide in, but still have a little drag. As you can see, this gauge won't slide in at all, so we know this clearance is smaller than 0.1 millimeters. So we're going to switch to our 0.05 millimeter gauge and see if we can get that to slide through. As you can see, this one's sliding through with a little drag, so we'll want to record this clearance at 0.05 millimeters. After that, we'll measure the other intake valve's clearance, and it's sitting a little tight too. We had to go down to a 0.03 millimeter for it to fit right, so we're going to record this one as 0.03 millimeters. And now we'll move to the exhaust valves, so we're going to start right in the middle of our limit with a 0.15 millimeter gauge and measure the clearance of the left exhaust valve. And it won't even slide in, so we'll move down a size to a 0.13 millimeter gauge. As you can see, it's perfect. A little drag is what you want, so we'll record that at 0.13 millimeters and move to the other exhaust valve. On this valve, we found that the 0.15 millimeter gauge fit perfectly, so we'll record this one as well. Keep in mind that you can put a little pressure on the roller part of the rocker arm and make it a little easier to get your clearance measurement. So now we've got all our measured clearances recorded, we're going to start removing the rocker arms to get to our shims. To do that, there's four bolts that run through the rocker arm pins, two on each side as you can see here. We'll go ahead and remove these. We're using a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet to do this. So we've got the two on this side, and then we've got the two on the other side. When those are out, we're going to pull the two plugs from the right side of the motor. These are covering the ends of the rocker arm pins. So do this with an 8mm Allen head wrench. And if one of the O-rings stays inside the hole, make sure you remove it to prevent it from getting damaged or misplaced. The next step is we're going to take one of the M6 bolts and thread it into the end of the rocker arm pin. You don't have to get it tight, just thread it in a couple turns and carefully pull the pin out of the head. 
When we pulled the rocker arm pins out of this head, we noticed both of them had a little flat spot on the top side as you can see here. Just make sure you install them the same way they are removed. When both rocker arm pins have been removed, you can go ahead and pull both the intake and exhaust rocker arms out of the cylinder head. Doing this is going to give us access to the valve shims. So using a magnet, pull each valve shim from the valve. It's a good idea to pull the shims out one at a time to make sure you're not getting them mixed up. Using the calipers, we're going to measure each shim to help us know which size we need to move to. Write that measurement down on the paper by the shim, and then we're going to repeat this process for the other three shims. And you can see we've got our four shims measured and recorded. As you can see, 0.13 and 0.15 are in spec for our exhaust valve clearances, so we can leave those alone. But we do need to adjust both intake valve shims. To do that, we'll take our desired clearance, which is 0.13 millimeters, and we'll subtract our measured clearance, which is 0.03 millimeters, and that equals 0.10 millimeters. So we'll subtract that from our current shim, and that gives us a new shim size of 2.78 millimeters. Keep in mind, sometimes you'll get a number that isn't the exact same as the shim, so just adjust to the nearest shim size and go from there. So on this one, we'd go to a 2.775 or a 2.8. For the other intake valve, again we're going to take our desired clearance, which is 0.13, and subtract our measured clearance, which is 0.05, and that equals 0.08 millimeters. And that subtracted from 2.92 gives us a new shim size of 2.84, and the closest shim to that is a 2.85. Now that we've got our new shims, we can go ahead and install those. When you do this, it's a good idea to use a magnet to get it down close, and then press it in the rest of the way with your finger. Another tip when you get the shim down on top of the valve, you want to try and rock it back and forth to make sure it's sitting flat and seated down all the way. Now we can reinstall the rocker arms by positioning them and sliding the pin into place. Unscrew the bolt and go ahead and install the other one. The next step is to reinstall the four rocker arm bolts and tighten them down. Once you slide all four of them into place, refer to your service manual for proper torque specifications. You want to make sure you're tightening these bolts in a crisscross pattern to avoid causing any damage. Now that those bolts are tight, we're going to remeasure our valve clearance. We've got the 0.13 millimeter gauge, and it's fitting perfectly in this first valve, so we know that's good to go. Now we're gonna check the right valve, and it's fitting perfectly as well, so both our intake valves are right where we want them to be. We're also gonna check our exhaust valves to make sure they're both still in spec. And it looks like they are. If they weren't at the right gap, you just have to remove the bolts pull the pin, and remove the rocker arm again to change the shim. After you changed it, just reinstall everything again and tighten your rocker arm bolts back down. Once you get it back together, recheck your clearance and adjust if needed. Repeat this process as many times as it takes. Since ours are in spec now, we can continue putting the motor back together. Go ahead and pull the rag. And then we're going to reinstall the two pin plugs on the other side of the motor. Make sure there's an o-ring on each plug. And when both of these are in place, the breather hose on the valve cover comes next. Slide that on and slide the clamp back up into place. Now we can carefully position the valve cover back down on top of the cylinder head. Reinstall the four valve cover bolts, starting them by hand to avoid any cross threading. Once you've got them into place, we're going to tighten them down in a crisscross pattern and just snug them down. You don't need to crank these down. After that, we can install the fuel tank and then finally the seat. Then we're done with this valve adjustment. 
If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at 1-800-336-5437 or visit us online at www.rockmountainatvmc.com. Rocky Mountain carries everything you need to perform a valve adjustment on your KTM. Check out our website for a complete list of OEM and aftermarket parts and accessories for your machine. Thanks for watching.